Hey folks, Brian, we got to play RQG on Friday night. I know it's Sunday because I've started class, so I've got research and papers to write, and my free time has got sucked up. Anyway, um, we started off with the adventurers in Bagnaz part of the occupying force there. And while they're there, Oleron's dragon friend, yeah, shows up. He's the guy who hired them off to the army to begin with has a little discussion with them about some indication and warnings that they're getting um, from spies and such that um, Maroff's house in Cardros, on Cardros Island may be a uh, inroad to uh, the Bagnot um, district as far as invasion kind of stuff going on. <clears throat> um, uh, they got a spy who's had been in contact with, uh, what is her name? I'm gonna have to change it, but the name that I have is Dianth Kalos. She's the uh, head man of uh, Maroff's house. And there's at least um, high level servants there that are leaning away from the Empire, so that may be a way in, and so they've got a, a passphrase to get them into the house to start talking with people. Um, but he also mentions um, that there's a lot of excavation going on in at the Boulder Ruins. Because under the Boulder Ruins was this um, Empire of the Worms Friends ruins as well, right? So <clears throat> so there's lots of excavation going on there, so that's a good thing. So he says, hey, maybe you're just lucky, but if you keep running into any of this Empire of Worms Friends contacts kind of stuff, investigate it, let us know. And um, there's some discussion about, uh, oh, just want to like play is in the description about um, you know supplies stuff like that so that's all being taken care of is not much of an issue um, this territory which is the Gerani district Gerani section maybe of the Bagnot district is that how I read that Districts and clans. Oh, the Gerani clan within the Bagnot district. And that's how, how it's read. <coughs> By the way, furthest, got it. It's great. Thank you very much. Working it really hard. Um, so that clan has been occupied, right? They're, they're, they're being controlled by Argrath's forces. So it's not really much of an issue traveling through there, but once you get close to uh, Carter's Island and some of the other areas on the other side of Long Lake, not so much, so they gotta be careful. So, try to plan ahead. <coughs> it's about eight days uh, walking from Bagnot to Maroff's house. They're going around. So I ran some random encounters to see what you know, they could run into along the way. And they ran into some Praxians. Praxians were part of the army, but what was the encounter like? Uh, it's a reaction role kind of thing. Very neutral. Some time going, oh yeah, we're on the same team, and they have a party. Um, they ran into some herders. Um, this would have been on the edge of the glow line, so these would have been uh, Tarshite exile herders. No issues there, they run and hide. Um, when they got to the river, or was that? No, I don't have it written down. Just before Long Lake. Set up for camp that evening. There's an encounter with predators. <coughs> Excuse me. Turned out to be uh, saber toothed cats. Did some, you know, who's unlucky? <laughs> and um, Irvana and Arestra out collecting firewood. Um, 
they made their, I think it was a listen rolls that they made um, as the cat pounced. So they didn't spy at it, but they got a chance to react that way. So it's a, actually jumping in a restaurant, Rusty does, makes a dodge, and then it attacks. Claw on the arm, claw on the abdomen, missed the bite. Um, but Rusty got a good chunk into his leg, and Irvana casts Demoralize on it. So it's demoralized, gets hurt in the leg, didn't get the bite. It's going to run. So it took off, three legged leap, <coughs> three legged scamper away, they let it go. Oh, he threw a final disruption at it, got it in the head, <laughs> but not enough to do any permanent type damage. Um, nice little encounter, keep things going. Um, the next encounter was at another tributary into the river on the other side of Long Lake. This had to cut straight through to get to the hills there. Better cover there. Not concealment actually. Better concealment in the hills. Well, cover too. Um, but they get to the river and there's an encounter with a dwarf. And uh, the dwarf in the um, Sartar's Companion. Says we're getting my random encounters from because we don't have them from anywhere else. Um, <coughs> is a bunch of iron iron dwarves out doing their thing, right? And going, what would they be doing out here? And I remember there were some adventures in. I was hoping it was a Sartar Companion. It turns out there are some. There's like two different adventures in the Sartar Companion dealing with dwarves, and so I snagged on one of them because it seemed to fit where the dwarf's trying to get um, an item back that had been um, gifted to the Empire of Worms friends. See the connection? Um, and a temple that I put here in the southern reaches of the Barost Barostaros Hills. Um, so adventure out of a random encounter. I thought it was pretty cool to put that together. They're also going to have another encounter later on with, um, is it Sunshin? Do you say the H? Shushin? Yun, Yunchen. Shun? Hasun. Hasunchen? Well, anyway, animal people, right? <laughs> Where people. And in order to fit, not to fit, not necessarily to fit, but a fit for an adventure. Um, that ties into what I've got going on in Marv's house deals with um, uh, well they're wear cats right in the in the scenario <coughs> and it looks like that the Baroli the lion people lion Hushin who are in Ralios fairly hefty have some contact into the Empire so I imagine they had some people come through uh, the mountains there so there's this small uh, family group of these lion people they're gonna run into which I think is kind of cool good bad or indifferent don't be prejudiced um, okay so they get to the tip of the drag the, the okay first lots of discussion with the dwarf on um, okay why why are you guys looking for us to do it <clears throat> Why can't you do it? And it has to do with this gift giving thing, right? Hey, we gave the gift. We can't just take it back. We need somebody else to get it for us. I, I tried to make a, a Hobbit reference going, we, somebody's going to go, well, you know, thieve it for us. And some of the players didn't quite catch that. And what do you mean? <laughs> anyway, so uh, the dwarf is actually keep going. They've got to rest. Okay, I'll rest. He sits down. <clears throat> they rest of the night. Next morning, he gets up early. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's near me, here, near. And they get to the hills and they get through a pathway up over the tree line. And then there's this uh, stairwell, right? Leading up right through the temple. Double doors already open. Um, they go inside. <clears throat> there's a central chamber. All kinds of treasure. Um, and they, they, it's not like on a pedestal, but up. Towards the front side, you can see this this armband thing that, they, that the dwarf wants them to get for him. And 
they decide to um, contact their whiter, which is a dragon spirit, <coughs> which they got hero questing, and it's tied in with the dragon from Dragon of Thunder Hills. She's kind of the <coughs> sorry, she's kind of the priest for the whiter, and then the player uh, character in this case is Dave and his Dong who's looking out for her, so she's kind of connected. So it's kind of like a double whiter kind of thing, but. Don't worry about it. <laughs> just, just play with it. <clears throat> so they essentially got these two sources of magic and magic points that David can tap into. And uh, yeah, David's the default. <clears throat> excuse me, the default uh, priest for this situation. Anyway, they decided to summon the wider, have him make some invitation rolls, make it an event kind of thing, right? And the wider shows up and they ask him, hey, are we in trouble here? And he looks around and he goes, you just might be. And then he looks up. I pay, people make uh, luck rolls because they've been looking with Second Sight and uh, with, I gave, I didn't give, I provided a treasure item that Dave and God that had Mystic Vision from RQ3. You know, trying to get some extra stuff into the, into the game, right? And it, it's starting to feel way overpowering to me. So I need to put some parameters on it because it's like, I can learn everything all about whatever out there is magical. And I said, that's not quite right. And it says items all the time. So maybe about an item, you can learn its history. You don't learn a person's history necessarily, right? The longer you look at them, well, we're talking about weeks of time to do that kind of thing, maybe. Uh, so I've got to go through and fix that. Anyway, so they're looking around. Um, but nobody actually mentioned looking up. You know, looking around for spirits. No spirits around here. Now, there is a dragon in here. It's on the ceiling, right? And um, <clears throat> so at this point, because they haven't taken anything, so nothing's happened yet. Um, I make luck rolls. Davin, somebody else, and the dragon spirit all made him, made him. So like the same thing goes, you might have some trouble. <laughs> Because there's the dragon on top. The dragon's got power, so it can be seen, all that kind of stuff, right? And that's where we kind of ended it, because I'm still struggling with Dream Dragons in, in Glorantha. Rife with magic, but they don't have any. <laughs> so, uh, I've kind of incorporated some ideas that um, I've taken from my buddy Bruce. But I don't want to break the magic system, so I'm thinking I just, they're, you know, dragons are rough magic, so they have access to all magic. So this dragon's got some sorcery, it's got some rune magic, it's got some um, a spirit magic. Now, do dragons really worship anything other than themselves? And do the rune magic actually come through the, the dragons? Yeah, I'm not sure. And I kind of like how they did in Thunder, Thunder Hills where the rune magic is simply super spirit magic. So use your power drives five, cost twice as much, that kind of stuff. To keep it simple. I'm kind of thinking that. But we'll see how that goes. And we kind of stop there because I've got to figure this stuff out because obviously converting from hero quest to rune quest takes a lot of effort. Happy gaming. Where's my mouse? There he is. <laughs>